Hello Spy Party fans, welcome to the party. I'm Tufty Indigo and you're a new Spy Party player who wants to learn about microfilm transfer. There's no tutorial in the game for microfilm yet. Uh, Checker, the developer of the game, has said that he'll add one, uh, but maybe you can't wait that long, you need to get completing those microfilm transfers now. So, I'm going to start this video by telling you how the mission works, just the same way that the tutorial would explain it. Well, the same way the tutorial will explain it when it, when it happens. Um, and then after that we'll talk about the different venues in Spy Party, uh, which ones uh, have the bookcases that you use for the microphone transfer, and uh, the different techniques that you use in each venue, uh, and how to fit that mission into your spy game. And um, because you have to snipe as well as spying, we'll look at how you can stop the spy from completing the transfer microfilm mission. Maybe you're not old enough to know what a microfilm is or to have used one, but if you've ever seen those 60s spy thrillers like Mission Impossible or The Man From U.N.C.L.E., a lot of those plots involve uh, smuggling stolen documents or secret plans in the form of these little microfilms. Uh, these days, I think you'd be more likely to smuggle your secret plans on a micro SD card than a microfilm, uh, but maybe you'd just upload them all to WikiLeaks anyway. Even so, in Spy Party we have to transfer our microfilm from one book to another book in a different bookcase. But what do we have to do with this microfilm? Well, there are two ways to do it, and both of them involve these bookcases that some maps have. You see they're green and blue here, uh, some maps have uh, white, uh, sorry. <sighs> now of course it's not quite as simple as that. Like everything else in Spy Party there are etiquette rules. What does etiquette mean? Etiquette is the rules of behaviour that the AI follows. And if you don't follow them and the sniper notices, that'll mark you out as the spy. And with books there's really three important times to watch etiquette. The first important time is when you take the book. So here we're just going to uh, we're going to break our idle animation to uh, step out of conversation and go straight to this bookshelf. Having arrived at the bookshelf, we have to immediately finish our drink. The AI will immediately finish the drink because you can't pick up the book with uh, the drink in your hands. And then we kind of wait for a second, and then we do get book. Now we've got the book. You'll notice we're doing this little read animation. It can be very subtle with some characters. Uh, Irish is a particular example. You'll see there's just the teensiest bit of head tilt. It's uh, it's not as much as when we do the, the action test. Um, there, so that one little head tilt is one animation cycle. Sometimes we'll turn a page over. Um, and so either that one little head movement or a page turn is one animation cycle. So you have to keep count of those just like you keep count of your animation cycles at statues. The AI will never do more than three cycles of the animation. So if you see how long I've been standing here with this book, that's that's already way too long. Oh, there you go. That was the, the page turn animation. So there's a page turn, the head moves slightly, and then it comes back to that neutral position. So... After we, one cycle is one page turn or one head movement with no page turn. And it looks slightly different on each character. So yeah, the AI will never do more than three cycles. Uh, there's a two thirds chance that they'll put the, back, the, put the book back in the same bookcase while they're standing there. And a one third chance that they will do some reads there and then take the book away. Um, if they do take the book away, they won't read it for the three cycles. They'll probably take it after they've done one cycle, but they might do a second cycle. There's a one in five chance that they'll do the second cycle. 
So if we want to take the book away to take it to the other bookshelf, or if we want to take it away to do an action test uh, somewhere else, then we want to read it for one or two cycles, and then we can walk away. When you're reading the book at different pads, so let's go to Windows and try this. Uh, say I'm reading the book. There's a stop reading book option. Unlike with statues, where there's a clank noise if you don't put the statue down, if you're reading, you can just wait till the end of the cycle and then walk away. You don't need to stop reading explicitly. As soon as you start walking away, it just stops reading for you. So, um, yeah, to summarize that, if you're doing the action test at bookshelves, you've got three cycles to do it, just like at statues. You can't stand there all day waiting for the sniper to look somewhere else. Um, if you're taking the book away, then you only have two cycles to make up your mind to do that, but doing it after just one cycle is safe. Uh, if you open the book to read it somewhere else, so here I'm in an empty conversation. Again, I'm going to do it for a whole number of cycles, and it's going to be one to three cycles, and then I'm going to stop reading the book and probably walk away. So having done that, we let's say we want to go and put the book back now. And this time I'm actually going to put it back in the same bookcase. So again, there's about a second pause before I start reading the book. There's one cycle. There's two cycles. Put the book back. Another short pause after I finish that. And then I'm going to walk away. So it's very similar, um, but uh, on this, th when you're putting the book back, you need to do two read animations. You can't do one. Um, that's an etiquette break. So let's put that all together and do a whole transfer. If we uh, if we reset the mission there, so I'm going to wait until my animation finishes here. Oh, I'm, I'm looking, giving people some side eye there. So there, and I'm going to step in with Duke here. He's reading. So I'm going to get this book. Okay, let's count the cycles. That was one. There's a page turn, that's two. I'm going to walk away. Here, I'm going to stand here and look at the sniper. I'm not reading the book right now. I don't have to do it right away. I can uh, do a nice watch check. And then let's read the book. So here, let's let's just one cycle at this time because we don't have all afternoon. That is a very subtle head movement there. See, with, uh, with some characters, and Irish is one of them, it's really hard to see even when you're the spy. So you... Um, you have to judge really how much attention to pay to the etiquette rules. Because if you can't tell whether you've done an animation, whether you're breaking an animation, the sniper can't tell either. So having done that, uh, let's just do some bouncing and then go to blue, short pause, read the book. There's one, there's a page turn, that's two, and put the book back. So there, we did the mission and we were we were safe in etiquette turns. So yeah, that can all be very slow. Even that, I did describe that as the quick method, and it's uh, it's not that quick. Now, of course, it's not quite as simple as that. Like everything else in Spy Party, there are etiquette rules. What does etiquette mean? Etiquette is the rules of behavior that the AI follows. And if you don't follow them and the sniper notices, that'll mark you out as the spy. And with books, there's really three important times to watch etiquette. The first case is when you arrive at bookcases to take a book. If you have a drink, you have to immediately finish the drink, just like statues. And after about a second's pause, you pick up the book and you automatically start reading it. Now, while you're reading it, you do this subtle animation, just like when you're idling in conversation. Sometimes it's one page turn of the book, 
and sometimes it's this little head movement that you can see wheels doing there. One cycle of the animation is one or the other of these. Either you do the page turn or you do the little head movement without a page turn. Just like conversation, you have to respect this animation before you put the book back or walk away. The AI will never do more than three cycles of the animation. There's uh, a two thirds chance that they will read the book and put it straight back and a one third chance that they'll take the book away. If they do take the book away, they won't read it for three cycles. They'll probably read it for one cycle and then walk away. But there's a one in five chance that they'll do the second cycle and then take it away. So in short, if you're doing the action test right there, you only have three cycles to do it. You can't stand there all day waiting for the laser to stop looking at you. If you're taking the book away, you don't even have three cycles, you, c you only have two. But doing it after one cycle is safe. So here we can see uh, Kane or Papa Danger steps into bookcases. After about a second, he starts his animation for picking the book up. And here he flicks the page over, that's one read animation. And, the end of and then as soon as he gets back to the neutral position there, he walks away with the book and he takes it to this conversation. As another example, here we can see Bling Twin steps into books. After a second, he starts his animation to pick up the book and then watches head movements. He does one page turn, that's one cycle. And then this time he does a second page turn. It, the animation might not have been a page turn twice. He might have done one little head movement and one page turn. But either way, that's still two cycles. And then he puts the book back. Boots here comes in, just does one animation there with no page turn. So that's one cycle and then walks off. And now if we follow her, one of the places that you can uh, take a book when you've got it out is to Windows here. So here she stands at Windows for a little while and then one cycle of reading the book and then she stops reading and then walks away. When you've got the book at a bookcase, you don't actually have to stop reading it. It's not like statues. With statues, if you walk away when you're holding a statue, you get the clank noise. Uh, with books, if you walk away from the bookcase while you're holding, you just stop reading the book and that's fine. When you're at Windows or in conversation, you can't do that. You have to do the, the stop reading action and then you'll stop reading and then you can walk away um, because the AI always leaves this little gap in between reading and, uh, and moving. Another thing you can do is have your book at an empty conversation. Now, as Boots is about to do, you can uh, get that way by just boring all of your conversation partners to death until they all leave or you can just step into an empty conversation while you're holding a book. Either way, when you find yourself in an empty conversation, you can do an idle cycle, and then only after you've done the, the of an idle cycle, you can then start reading your book on your own. Now the last part of uh, carrying your books around is the book return. After you step onto the pad, again there's a second pause, and then you start reading the book. This time you always have to do two read cycles. So we see Walt Disney did one page turn and then one subtle head movement and then he puts the book back. So it's always two when you're returning. Now let's put all that together and do a whole transfer as the spy. We can see Queen's just sidled into that blue bookcase. So let's go and join her. Just uh, there. So there's a bit of a squash here, but I'm going to Im immediately finish my drink. Wait a second and then take the book. And now let's watch the read. There's one cycle with the page turn. And then that's a, a very subtle head movement there. Rocker's kind of just goes to the right a few times. So that's two. So we're going to leave here and uh, we're going to go to Windows. Now we're at Windows. Uh, we could do a watch check here. Uh, there's nothing to stop you doing a watch check and a read. And in fact, uh, we had a, a discussion on the Discord before. Uh, that, that's uh, discord.gg slash spyparty, the official Discord. 
And it seems that some snipers uh, will would like to low light for combining a watch check and a read. Um, because it's just quite rare for spies to do that. Spies will generally go straight to the thing they're doing. So there we've done one read animation. And there's a second one. So uh, let's just uh, do the action test now. And that's a white test. And you see it's not uh, it's not too bad. So uh, while we're here and we've got the book actually, let's do uh, another one and we'll do a red test so you can see it. So you see you pick the wrong thing out of your pocket, you act surprised at it, you pick a second thing and then it takes you ages to stick it in the book. It's a lot slower. So now that we've had the book out for ages, let's uh, let's stop it. If the sniper didn't see us do the red test, then they, they're probably not going to see us break an animation here. So uh, now we've done that, we can uh, walk away. And as the, we've just put the microfilm back in the book, we can head straight to blue, green bookcases and put it in here to complete the mission. So we stepped in, we wait a second, we start reading. That's one recycle. We have to do two recycles because we're putting it back. So that's the second one, put back. The transfer microfilm is now done. Uh, we, we probably got a bit of a, a bit of heat for the, the action test there, but uh, it looks like we got away with it. Now that can all be very slow. So like any other etiquette rules, you have to judge how much you can break them without becoming suspicious. Uh, as you've just seen, the animations are pretty subtle, uh, especially on some characters. And uh, yeah, with the more subtle characters, they're hard to see even when you're the spy. So if it's hard to see a spy, it's very hard to see for the sniper. Uh, and as we just saw at Windows, if the sniper doesn't see you do the, uh, do the action test, they probably won't see you break a read animation. However, a really short or long visit to bookshelves might catch the sniper's eye, even if they weren't paying enough attention to see what you did while you were there. Um, so it's, it's just the same as with uh, statues, really. Somebody might notice you three cycle statues, even if they didn't see you do the swap. There is one last thing to say about etiquette, and that's uh, the three at a bookcase meme. If you watch Spy Party Cast, you'll hear people say, wee woo, wee woo, three at a bookcase, three at a bookcase. Um, because it used to be thought that the AI never does that. Uh, whereas in fact, it's actually pretty common for AIs to go three at a bookcase, as in this, uh, which is another competitive game replay. Uh, and especially at the larger bookcase pads, like this one on library, you see there's plenty of room here for three. At the smaller pads, like uh, like where we just were on ballroom, where the bookcases are quite narrow. Um, three is definitely too much there, but it's it's not about the number of people at the bookcase. It's just about how squashed up they are. If you uh, if you're intersecting somebody else, like sometimes people do at conversations, then you're you're way too close. Just don't squash yourself into the bookcase when there clearly isn't a gap. Um, but be aware that because of the the whole three at a bookcase meme. Some snipers actually do highlight for three at a bookcase, um, even though it's it's not really that suspicious at all. So now we've seen both ways to complete the mission. Let's look at the different maps and what they offer to you as a microfilm courier. Uh, in general, what we're looking for is uh, how hidden the bookcases are, how much cover there is. Uh, and on other places that have cover where you can take a book and do the microfilm transfer there uh, if you're doing the action test transfer. So if we start with ballroom, you'll see uh, banana bread. The blue pad is, sorry, this is a, a, again a, a replay of a competitive game. You'll see the blue pad is very small here. So uh, we, 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 we threw a big shells meme. Um, the green pad is a bit bigger and can easily fit three people. And we'll see Human Kirby here has elected to do the AT there. So the thing with uh, with Ballroom is there is a lot of cover on this map, but a lot of it is dynamic. So if we look at the sniper cover, uh, sniper camera, it happens that Kirby was behind um, a pillar at that point. But if the sniper was in a slightly different position, they'd have been invisible. And the blue bookcase here is the same. In the, the, the starting sniper position, the default position, this blue bookcase is very visible. But you'll see uh, Kirby just did the uh, the action test there and it wasn't noticed at all. So that's a successful microfilm. Um, on the whole, you can't rely on uh, on the sniper not noticing when it's on camera. But uh, 
you have to keep an eye out. Uh, let's just pause the replay so I can finish. Uh, you have to keep an eye out for what the other guests are doing because a lot of the a lot of the cover is dynamic. So uh, here you'll see uh, where, where Kirby is now um, with people in this conversation. There's a, a very uh, covered area, so you could you could be standing at those pictures at the back and do it there while this conversation circle is full. But if you wanted to do it where Queen is standing, that is very visible. It's just as visible as the bookcase there. Um, but if this conversation cycle was full and this one were empty, then these uh, pictures would be a really good place to do it. Um, so yeah, it's very dynamic in ballroom. You have to look at the party before you decide where to do your action test, if you're going to do an action test. Now, if we look at library here, um, this is often described as the spy's playground because of course the sniper has so little visibility. And because of that, it's a lot easier to get away with uh, microfilm than on some other maps. Um, if you want to do an action test transfer, your uh, some good places are, if I pick up my book, there's a lot of these little windows at the back. Well, there's, there's, only, there's the, uh, the kind of time ad window here where you can stand and do a time ad that's quite hidden by the pillar there and by uh, this conversation circle maybe. Um, so this can be a good place to do it. You can go all the way to the end of the map here. And there's this nice little bust of Elizabeth Fry. Uh, and there's a Jeremy Bentham over there. Um, so you can, uh, you can look at Elizabeth Fry and have her watch you do the action test transfer. But the sniper has a hard time seeing it here because it's really out the way. Unless they're camping statues, um, watching out for a swap on those statues next to you, they probably won't see you there. Um... You can, if you're feeling very brave, you can even do it when you're facing towards the sniper. That's a very high risk move. And uh, usually there's no reason to, to be so risky. But if uh, if the ambassador and Toby are both at the same end of the map, uh, so say ambassador and Toby are where they are now, they're, they're right over there. That's where the sniper is going to be looking. So uh, maybe I can get away with doing it here. So yeah, there's loads of good places for action test transfers. Um, it's also common to do something like, say I've got my blue book here that I've just taken. It's quite common to walk all the way along the map, which will take ages. But uh, maybe I'm coming over here and I'm going to flirt with my ST or I'm going to uh, contact a double agent in this conversation. So I can hang out with this book over here and then uh, I can head back this way. So uh, it's kind of, um, I can do the direct transfer into green here. And this is quite a common tactic. So what I'm banking on is that even if the sniper saw me walking from left to right, that uh, because I've spent so long over by yellow bookcase, all he knows is that the book isn't yellow. He knows it's come from this direction somewhere. But if I put it in green, then uh, he might think that's okay because he's not entirely sure whether it came from blue or green. Uh, so yeah. That's uh, that's a, a really good uh, a really good strategy. Well, it's a really popular strategy on library. Um, of course, snipers also know that these are the popular strategies on on library. So sometimes just taking a book to the action test transfer corner can. Oh, I even missed it there. Taking a book to the action tra test transfer corner can be suspicious in itself. So uh, if I'm already suspicious and I start taking my book over here, maybe uh, the sniper is going to be uh, expecting an action test transfer at that point. Now, Gallery is a pretty uh, amazing map because look at these two bookshelves. They are right next to each other. And uh, if you look at this conversation circle and how many people are, are at this painting with me, there is just so much cover here. So uh, a really popular, a really popular strategy for for this map is just to uh, walk into one of them and pick up the book and just go whoosh straight over here. Read the book, put it back, slam it down, walk away like you were never at bookshelves, uh, and uh, that's a common. It's not always that extreme. Sometimes people are more cautious. Sometimes they uh, watch the etiquette, but. Uh, you will see people do it this quickly 
if they're rushing and maybe they started off the map um, at this end of the at this end of the venue. Um, gallery is you do have to play very fast for gallery because it's so big. Um, so that kind of rush of microfilm can be uh, a huge boon. That's like one miss in progress, and it could be in the first ten or twenty seconds of the map. And uh, if the snipers, you know, in the time of chaos and the ambassadors stuck in the doorway so they're not looking down this end at all, it can be very effective. You can get away with it very cleanly. And yeah, sometimes you can just break all the etiquette, do it super speed and uh, still be still get away with it. Um, of course, you can't always do that. And especially as the game goes on, if there's there's nothing for the sniper to look at, then you won't get away with that. In that case, one common strategy is to uh, to pick up the book. And then maybe walk, uh, maybe walk over here to, to this painting or to uh, to this painting, and to come here and to do the action test transfer right here. So here a white test, and you see the uh, the animations are a bit pronounced there with, with the white test, but um, yeah. It's it's reasonably safe. Uh, it's certainly safer than doing it, doing the extra test transfer at the bookshelves, um, where you're end on to the to the sniper and they can see their head tilt properly. It's much harder to see it from here, and it's not really an area that snipers look at. And even this is kind of perverse. An even safer area to do your action test transfer, uh, if I just add time here, is uh, is right at the front here because it's quite rare to, for snipers to look here unless you're doing a time ad. So uh, this little one at the sides is a bit better. But to do this, it does mean you have to bring your book all the way out to the front and nobody ever has time for that. So uh, I don't really recommend that unless you've got loads of time to burn and you're pretty sure that the sniper's not looking at that front conversation. Um, if you get the book all the way down there and then find that actually the, the ambassador's in that front conversation. So the, the sniper's going, probably going to be looking there and you don't want to do the action task transfer there, then you're kind of stuck. You've wasted all the time for nothing. So uh, although it's quite a nice spot, it's impractical sometimes. Now, Veranda is uh, an amazing map for uh, for doing microfilm transfer as a mission. Um, if we just uh, if we just uh, stop talk here, we can see the uh, the red and green bookshelves here are right next to each other. It's really easy to uh, to take one out of here and just drop it in here. And um, because of the shape of the map, if the sniper is round looking at the other side of the map, it is possible to um, to just do this direct transfer like at the back of gallery and just get away with it completely cleanly without even being seen at books. Um, especially if a highlighted character is over at the statues on the other side. Um, however, on this side of the map, there is not really a good place to do an action test transfer. Um, the red bookcase, we woo three at book three at bookshelves. Actually, this is quite close. Maybe I'm uh, I am being a bit of a this is a bit of a giveaway here that where I've perched right on the end. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to find good places on this side of the map to do an action test transfer. Doing them at the bookshelf is uh, okay because those two bookshelves do have a bit of cover from that conversation cycle. But if we go and look at the other bookshelf, the blue one over here. Uh, you have this amazing window right next to it. This is just as good as those uh, those little statues at the back of library. Um, it's really hidden from the sniper camera. And so they, they have to almost come all the way around here or they can just about see through the window if they can line it up to, to avoid the pillars there. It's really hard to see here. But again, everybody knows that this is the the microfilm transfer corner on this map. So if you do bring a book out here and the sniper sees you bringing it here, they will definitely be on the guard for a microfilm transfer there. Um, but yeah, it's it's an amazing little spot and there's a, you, there's a, you don't even need to bring the book over here to do it because there's a bookcase right there. Um, 
bringing a blue book out to either of the green or red bookcases is uh, not amazing because you've got to walk for miles with it. And it's it's kind of, even if the sniper's just looking at the middle of the map, it's quite easy to see, oh, this person has just uh, brought a book right to left or is just taking a book left to right. And so, yeah, they'll know if you are if you don't go back the same direction with it. So let's move on again. And let's look at Modern. Uh, Modern is a little bit similar to Veranda with the three bookshelves. Um, however, there's, there's not two on one side and three on another. Uh, all of these are really quite close to each other. So direct transfers are very plausible, but if you look at the sniper view, there's there's no cover at all. Um, the only cover is if you're at that green bookshelf, like twin, oh, excuse me, like twin is here, and that conversation's full. You can get away with a lot there. Um, however, if you look at KCM here, again, this is a competitive game. KCM's playing against Crazy Kaylee. We can see uh, KCM's just picked a book out of red, and is just walking into this conversation with it. Um, the red bookcase is quite bad to do an action test transfer because with the way it's side on and you're very silhouetted against a, a dark background, it can make the, the action test very easy to see if you choose to do it. Uh, green is much better for doing an action test at. Uh, we'll see here, uh, KCM is doing a, a nice innocent return. But they did decide to do the transfer before returning. And yeah, we could see that where it was side on like that. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say about that. Uh, coming over here to the, the corner of death, as people like to call it, um, is uh, a plausible option for action tests. But again, because snipers know that this corner is here, or it, this wall down here is another option. And in the red. Uh, not that there's actually a wall down here, but you know, the edge of the, the, edge of the map here. Um, these are both plausible venues, especially this one, because the sniper has no reason to look here. Um, unless they see you walking that way purposefully with a book under your arm and they think, hmm, maybe they're taking it over there to do the action test where I can't see it. Um, yeah, so direct transfers can be powerful here. Action tests can be okay, especially that green one. Um, this one's less good because he's, he's not really in cover of the conversation there. walking away with it. Walking away with the book is uh, can be a good choice because if the sniper was kind of staring you down like I was just then, it gives them a chance to think, okay, I've, I've dealt with that microfilm risk. I'm going to look elsewhere now. And then when you step back in, you do it while they're not looking. Like that. That was that was very clean. So yeah, that was modern. Now our last map to talk about is uh, High Rise here, and uh, this is a more interesting one to talk about because of course High Rise is often played as a three of five map, and in that mode, it's actually very common to turn off microfilm um, because it is quite hard to do on this map, and. Uh, you would usually rather turn on, if you look here, I've got Bug, Inspect, and Poloin turned off. And I think on this map, I would rather have any one of those than um, the microfilm. Bug is a good choice to uh, just to crash Bug, uh, you know, uh, opportunistically, it's good to have. And it gives the sniper something to watch. Inspect, again, gives the sniper something to watch because it's a soft tell. It makes it more likely that the AIs will continue, will uh, complete missions and frame themselves. And again, Poloin, um, quite weak on this map because it's so visible. Maybe I wouldn't, uh, maybe I wouldn't go for Poloin, but again, it can be a good opportunistic one, uh, especially if you uh, if you're shooting for a green Poloin, it can help you to frame. Um, so microfilm's not that common on this map, but if you do have it, uh, let's just ignore Toby there. If you do have it, this uh, green bookcase is quite nice for doing it. It's very hidden, um, but again. Because it's hidden and uh, snipers know it's hidden, they will rotate around to look at you if you're at all suspicious and you're standing where I'm standing and you have a book. Um, 
taking a book out to the uh, the time ad corner over here can be okay, but you've, you've basically just removed your cover. It kind of, uh, it makes it easier to see, but it's also a less suspicious place to do it. So there's a, a trade-off to make there when you decide. Um, it's like drawing your attention to yourself uh, versus uh, doing something that's easy to see even without attention. I guess that's the, the trade-off really. Um, the bookcases are really quite far apart for the size of the map. If you're going to do a direct transfer, then you probably want to step into conversation for a bit and try and get some other missions done, do a seduce, do a, a contact. Um, especially you can you can do contact into transfer. If you've already got the book, you can contact, step out of conversation and then slam it in the other bookcase. Um, and then you completed the mission. So yeah, not a very popular mission on this map, but there are strategies. Uh, this bookcase, you'll notice, does have this uh, nice plant in front of it. So it is a little bit hidden, even though it's kind of in the front. Um, the sniper can rotate around and look at it from an angle, but then they're hiding those two statues. So if, uh, if somebody suspicious is at those two statues, you can definitely get away with an action test here. And as I said, you can get an action, get away with an action test at the green book cases as well. So it's it's not all that bad. It's just less popular than some of the other options. Um, and of course, if you do leave this mission on, then uh, it kind of it gives the uh, the sniper something else to look for, just like inspectors. Um, the sniper has to keep track of who's been to which book cases. Um, and uh, who who's taking books away? Who might be doing action transfer? Um, it's better than than burglary really, from that point of view. So now we've talked about how to use microfilm when you're the spy. Let's talk about how we're going to fight against it when we're the sniper. And uh, really, the only sure way is to track all the books. So there we've seen that uh, Boots has just been to green bookcases, uh, but didn't take the book out. Uh, and we were we had her in view the whole time. We know she didn't do microfilm transfer. Now Rocker's going to blue books, and uh, we can look at this. And you'll see I've got this little box here. Um, even before she steps away from the bookcase, um, I can uh, I can click on this book, and clicking on the book marks its color. So I can see that it's come from blue and you, you just click through uh, to cycle all the colors. So you, you're responsible for getting the color right for knowing which bookcase it came from, but uh, it can be easier than remembering it. At the same time, some snipers really don't like to use marking of books um, because it's even more obvious than highlighting. If you, uh, you, it's quite fiddly to do, you, you have to kind of zoom in a bit maybe. Uh, if they're, they're in conversation facing away from you it, or walking, it can be hard to click on the book, uh, especially as you have to click on it more than once for some colors. Um, we're a bit suspicious of Boots here because this is her second visit to bookcases. So uh, if we weren't completely sure that she hadn't done the action test transfer when she was at Green Books, we'd be uh, extra suspicious of her now, especially as she's now gone into a very shielded position. That could be a good place for doing her second AT transfer, and so she could have finished that mission. Um, uh, unlike Alice, who has been to Green Books twice and is now walking off with a Green Book, but hasn't been to Blue Books yet. So yeah, um, some people like to track by remembering who has been to what bookcase rather than by clicking on the books because um, it makes it harder for the, the spy to know whether you've seen them with that book or not. Um, that takes a bit more mental effort. In fact, it's quite a lot. Let's not be around the bush here. It takes quite a lot of mental effort to, uh, to remember, oh, Alice has got a green book, uh, Rocker's got a blue book, uh, who else, whoever else has got a book, to just keep remembering that through the whole game at the same time as keeping an eye on Poloin, remembering who's rejected drinks from Toby in case there's a green Poloin, remembering the statues, remembering who's been to statues, um, who's in conversation with who if there's a, if you're at a bar and there's a, there could be a delegated Poloin going on. There's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And really, I think um, 
remembering the books is one of the more intensive things to keep track of because there's just so much to remember. Um, so it's a kind of trade-off really. You can choose to uh, let the sniper know that you've seen their books uh, by always marking them or you can choose to uh, to use more mental effort by remembering them in your head. Um, if you do see somebody who you, you suspect and you want to check that they don't do an action test transfer, zooming in on them like this is not a very good idea because it's just like zooming in to check the, uh, the statue swap. It, they know that you're looking right at them. You're burning a hole with the laser in their heads. If they were going to do the action test transfer, there's no way they're going to do it while you're looking like this straight at them. Um, it's much better if you uh, if you suspect that a transfer is going to happen, an action test transfer, to, to look a bit away, to, to take your view away, but keep them in view in the corner. Uh, same as with statues, same as with bug, uh, same as with Ploin, all of those missions. Um, you can bait them out. Now you see, Alice has been quite crafty though. She's stepped into an empty conversation where it is possible to read the book and do the transfer, but she's really very hidden. We couldn't even tell if she's reading the book until we come all the way around here. Now we can see her book. So yeah, that's one trade-off. Um, if you can't manage to remember all of the books... Uh, what you can do is try to count the visits like we did just then. Uh, we see uh, Boots has been to Green Bookcase and then to Blue Bookcase and then to Blue Bookcase again. Um, even if you can't keep track of where the books are, then a character who has been to more than one bookcase might have finished the mission. If you know you're not tracking whether they arrived with books or not. Um, it's less good because obviously it's much more common for the AI to just go to both bookcases. Um so you will start suspecting AIs for going to two bookcases, but if you, uh, it's it's a it's still better than not tracking it at all. If you think that uh, microfilms are a big blind spot for you, um, if you can't even count the visits and you can't remember who's been to bookcases at all, then the very least you can do to stop yourself being vulnerable to transfer microfilm is uh, if somebody's out of bookcase and nothing else is happening at the party, just just keep an eye on them. Just just uh, don't don't put the laser on them. But while they're in the corner of your screen, watch them. Are they uh, are they doing an action test? Uh, are they breaking the etiquette? Maybe. Um, if you see character going towards one of those action test spots that we talked about, so like those two uh, statues at uh, the busts at the end of library or that little corner in veranda, um, and you see somebody going towards it with purpose and they've got a book under their arm, don't put the laser on them. Just keep them in the corner of your view and see if they do an action test. Even... If you miss a lot of microfilm transfers this way, because uh, you know people are doing direct transfers and you can't remember where the books came from, at least that way you will see some spies, some spies uh, doing microfilm some of the time, and it makes it harder for them. If a spy knows that you can't track microfilm at all, then they will definitely use that against you. They will microfilm every game until you learn to deal with it. But if you uh, if you just do it sometimes. If you uh, if you just punish them for it now and then, even if uh, just maybe one game in ten, you decide I'm not going to watch anything else. I'm just going to watch books just to make sure they're not disrespecting me with microfilm transfers. And you can punish them for for disrespecting you. Then uh, you can try and cover up this blind spot and uh, discourage the spies from trying to exploit it, even if you're generally quite bad at tracking microfilm. As microfilm transfer is such a, a slow mission potentially, it's great if you can combine it with a different mission. Uh, the two most common would be fingerprints and flirting. Uh, when the ambassador puts a book back in the bookcase, the next book on that comes from that bookcase will have a fingerprint on it, and of course the book after that will have a hard fingerprint on it. Uh, so if you can keep your eye on the ambassador and see when the ambassador puts a book back, then you can go to that book 
get it out, get the fingerprints, and use that book for your microphone transfer, whether that's the direct transfer or the action test transfer. Um, it's kind of annoying though if uh, you've already done one half of your action test transfer and then the ambassador goes to that same bookcase. It's, uh, it's just irritating because it would have been nicer if they'd gone to the other one and you could get mission progress on two missions at once. Um, as I mentioned in the flirting video, you can flirt at bookcases just the same way as you can at Windows and so you can combine that with your, uh, with your microfilm as well to get faster mission progress. Um, just remember you only have about a second or two to pull the book out when you get to the bookcase, so uh, don't start flirting before you pull the book out. Uh, that's just bad etiquette if you do that. You should pull the book out and then you can start flirting while you're doing your read cycles on the book. Um, the other thing about fingerprints at, uh, at bookshelves is of course if the ambassador went to a bookcase and took a book and started reading it and left a fingerprint there, they probably put their case down at the same time, so you might be able to get both fingerprints at once. That can be uh, quite suspicious if the sniper is looking out for fingerprints. Um, if you're doing two fingerprints and the microphone transfer at once, then they might get very excited about that. But if you're, if you're not very suspicious and you think you can get away with a rush, that's a great way to rush a mission and a half with just one visit. So uh, keep an eye out for that if you can. One technique to use if you think you're suspicious is to try to reduce suspicion by taking a book out of the bookcase, walking around the party to various places with it for a long time, um, and then just taking it back to the same bookcase completely, completely innocently. Um, what you're saying to the sniper when you do that is, uh, oh look, I've, I've taken this bookcase and you've watched me doing it, and I've spent all this time holding it, and because I've had a book, uh, because I've had a book in my hand, I've not been able to do with the missions, and would a spy really waste this time in this way? And so it's a, it can be a good way to use up time to try and get rid of some suspicion. Um, however, it only works if the, the sniper really is tracking those bookcase visits well. Um, if they're only tracking them a little bit, then they might see that you've just got back to a bookcase with a book in your hand that they can't remember where it came from, uh, or they'll notice that you've had a book for ages and they're not sure where you've been with it and if they might have missed an action test transfer. And so sometimes it can make you more suspicious. They might have to credit you with having completed microfilm transfer. They might have to assume you've done it because they couldn't see what you're doing um, when you were trying to get less suspicious. So uh, that's, that can be a good technique, but it depends on the sniper, whether they're watching that mission and, and how good a sniper they are. It's really one where knowing your audience, knowing your sniper, really helps. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more high-level analysis of Spy Party play, then you could do worse than visiting twitch.tv slash spyparty for the official Spy Party casts with uh, some analysis of competitive plays uh, and a lot of tips. If you've watched this video and you didn't understand it at all because you've not played Spy Party yet, then you should go to spyparty.com and check it out there. And you can buy it on Steam. I've been Tufty Indigo. You've been lovely and attentive. And I'll see you again in the Spy Party lobbies from one end or other of a sniper scope. Goodbye.